So over the past couple months, I've noticed that I've been buying a lot of really random ballpoint pens for no reason in particular. And I want to do a quick video about some of my favorites. Some of these you have seen before and a lot of them you probably haven't. So uh, stick it out. I think some really fun pens here. You get right into it. Uh, there's going to be 10 in total, with a couple bonuses thrown in. First off, we have this pen. Uh, this is a brand new pen. It's called the Uni or Mitsubishi Pencil Uni Limex. So this looks like a Uni uh, Boxy, it's called, or Mitsubishi Pencil Boxy. But this model is a ballpoint made out of material called Limex, which is actually crushed limestone that is formulated into a sort of composite that's a plastic replacement or a wood replacement. It could replace any sorts of materials, but this is one of the first commercial applications of Limex. And uh, obviously it's a pen, it's a ballpoint, it sells for maybe like two or $3. Uh, and it's quite cool. When you pick it up, it feels like plastic. It doesn't feel like limestone, but it's actually crushed up limestone. And if you do some research into the material, you'll see that it's actually quite cool. It has a little bit of flex like you'd expect, but it doesn't use any wood, no petroleum products, nothing like that. It's a limestone based product uh, and it's becoming commercially available. So very cool, especially if you know the backstory. So this is the Uni Limex. It's a fine writer. It's more about it being an interesting, cheap pen. Again, you'll see these coming available in the coming weeks. It'll sell for about three bucks. Next up, we have this pen. This is an older one, but it's also really interesting and weird. It's called the Sailor, I believe it's called a Karai. And it's a really cheap ballpoint pen. It's like nothing to it. It's kind of the pen you would get at the bank or something like that. But it is interesting because it uses an antibacterial coating or plastic or something like that, but it's antibacterial, uh, not antimicrobial, which I would have expected, but they say antibacterial, which is very interesting. So theoretically, this will, I guess, keep your hands clean somehow to some extent. Uh, and this is like the cheapest possible pen. There's no frills to this, nothing at all. It's so lightweight. It's like, again, like something you would get at a restaurant when you're signing the check, but the material or the coating is antibacterial. And there's a couple different versions of the Karai. Usually you'd see this in a multi-pen. I just happened to randomly pick it up in the uh, single retractable version. Next up, another weird one. This is the Zebra Z-Grip Rose Gold Edition. Like, rose gold. That's like kind of strange to see in an iPhone. And Zebra went ahead and released it in a pen. Uh, very odd. It's kind of this kind of pinkish gold, so rose gold makes sense. It's a triangular pen. It has these random kind of lines all over it. Uh, it's actually a nice writer. It's a 1.0 millimeter. And this is the rose gold Z-Grip. The Z-Grip is a pen we've looked at before. It's actually a cheapo office pen that actually writes fairly well. And you usually see it in the retractable version, not a stick. So this is a little strange to see it in a stick, but then also in rose gold was just uh, too interesting to pass up. This body is a triangular shaped body, which is interesting to see in an otherwise very boring ballpoint pen. Next up, we have this pen. This is the Link Glycer, kind of like glycerin, but they left the letters off the back. And Link is an Indian pen company or Indian plastic plastics company, but this is their Glycer Super Smooth Ball Pen. And these things sell in mega packs. Like you can get 40 of these shipped to the US. So shipped to your address for like $10. In India, I think they're a lot cheaper than that. So you don't have to worry about shipping. And this is just a very simple budget ballpoint pen. Has a sort of dated like 90s design but it's from a company called Link, L-I-N-C, not L-I-N-Q. There's a company called Link like that as well. This is L-I-N-C, and it's the Glycer. Not a great writer. It's fine, but definitely not great. Uh, just a little 
strange seeing a pen company you've never heard of before, but different, you know, it's, they usually do uh, pens sold in the Indian market or they rebrand pens. So like Mitsubishi or Uniball might have Link make their Indian market pens, stuff like, like partnerships like that. And this one has just like a skinny little ballpoint refill, like you might expect. Uh, very old school, made, everything's made in India. So it's kind of a throwback, but to totally functional, very affordable. I don't know the price in, in uh, rupees, but again, very cheap. Next up, we have the Bic Mio. So if you're from Europe, you probably see these all the time and you're thinking like, what is this doing on this list? This is a very popular pen in Europe. Uh, but in the US, these are, I believe not sold at all and they're very, very rare. Uh, I actually bought this on a trip. I, I've never seen one of these in the US. So it's a very stripped down retractable pen. It's as simple as a pen could get. No, like it doesn't come apart. It can't be refilled. The mechanism is super simple. I don't even think there's anything to this except for a spring and a flexible piece of plastic. That's it. It's a two piece design uh, and it's just a very cheap pen. This is called the Bic and it's called the Mio, M-I-O. It writes fine. None of these pens so far have been uh, even worth noting how they write. That's why I haven't gotten into it. If anything, the Sailor is probably the best. But that's the Bic Mio. And one of the things I think is super interesting about this pen is, check this thing out versus a one of the most iconic ballpoint pens of all time, the Fisher AG7 Space Pen. And like, what is going on here? They both have a tapered shape to them. They both have grip lines going down here, like a horizontal grip or perpendicular grip. They both are retractable ballpoints with a side button. It, it's really crazy to me that Bic would have gotten their cheapest, most budget pen, and then gone ahead, gone ahead and had it clearly been inspired by the AG7. Just, just very interesting to note when I saw the two randomly close to each other on my desk. <clears throat> Next, we have the, uh, skipping around a little bit. This is the uh, Nataraj, I believe that's how you say it. Nataraj, Nataraj, Mist. And this is a cheapo Indian pen, similar to the Link Glisser, uh, but clearly has a different design. It's even more basic looking. The printing is very simplistic looking. Uh, the lines here are kind of, everything's like a little bit fuzzy and uh, it's just a really simple pen. Then you open it up, you could see it has like a near needle point, which is very odd. Uh, it actually works really well. This, this is the Nataraj, let me make sure I'm getting it. N-A-T-R, yeah. Mist. Uh, sorry, mist like the water vapor and not mist like the game. And this is probably the best writer so far. And it's very odd coming from this needle tip. And that stuff there is just the dip that keeps it dry. And I tried to pull it off, but this stuff is like really stuck on there. And this pen does not come apart. It's not, you know, refillable, replaceable. The cap fits on the top. That was listed as one of the perks of the pen, crazily enough. Uh, one of the other weird perks of this pen is their website says their ink is made in Germany, which seemed kind of random, but definitely interesting. And you can buy a lot of these. Again, you can get 40 of these for like 10 bucks. It's pretty similar in pricing to the Glisser. But uh, Nitraj is a company that I don't know much about but it seems like they make some pretty legit ballpoint pens from the Indian market. And you could find these off eBay, but not really so much Amazon. Or not even Rakuten or AliExpress, like not, none of those Japanese manufacturers, resellers are carrying them. It's really, eBay is the best place to go. Here's one that's slightly less weird I thought everyone would be interested in. This is the Bic Crystal, obviously, but this is in the Ultra Fine. Maybe you didn't know that this pen is sold in, I believe a one, uh, sorry, a 0 0.7 millimeter near needle tip. So this is the ultra fine Bic. Not a great writer, 
these things are really best when they're wider. So this thing is gets the job done, but it's just nor you know, just okay. Here's kind of the extreme other end, and that's the Big Crystal 1.6 millimeter. And this is just called the like the strong or the bold or something like that. They don't use very standard naming there. This is a lot bolder and a lot smoother, but very odd to see a Bic in a needle point. And again, that's the ultra fine. You can find these, maybe not at your local superstore, but online you could find them. Okay, moving along. Uh, now we have the Foray. This is the Office Depot brand ballpoint. Uh, Foray is just like the in-house brand for Office Depot. I had thought this pen was familiar when I was using it. And then I had it randomly close to a Zebra. This is the Zebra uh, Z-Grip Flight. And clearly a rebrand. Uh, it's not a big deal. You know, that's a fine thing to do. If you like Zebra's pens, you could call them on the phone and have them brand some pens for you. It's probably a uh, great business, especially if you have uh, a bunch of stores that you want to fill up with products like Office Depot does. So this is the Foray, which is probably not a brand you know about, Advanced Ink Ballpoint. And uh, it's a Zebra, so it works pretty well. I haven't even used this one yet. I have, it comes in like a 10 pack, so I have used it, but not this specific one. This is the Foray. And this is a good writer, no problems with this thing. It's not amazing, but totally in a league above most of what we've seen before. Foray. Uh, obviously, it be, might be easier to find as a Z-Grip Flight, and it's essentially the same pen. There's no reason to buy one or the other, except if you like the styling of the Zebra, or maybe you like the styling of the Foray. Uh, then we have this pen. This is not particularly weird. It's more interesting, which you don't see these in the US. This is called the Schneider Tops 505F. And this is sort of the budget pen from Schneider. Uh, again, if you're from Germany, this might be the pen that you use every day. It might be no big deal. But here in the US, you see Schneider's, but you don't see their full line. And you definitely don't see this kind of cheap stuff. Uh, this is not really any reason to import these. We have a lot of options here. This is the Tops 505F. And this is just like a just a workhorse type pen. You could write with this thing forever. Very simple design. It uh, doesn't write great, but it will write for a very long time and it'll be very cheap. Uh, these things, like you really have some trouble getting the true pricing from these when you're importing them from the US because they're being sold in such small quantities, but it's more of a big quantity pen. One thing I thought was cool about this is you have your standard uh, hexagonal shape, similar to the Bic Crystal, but rather going hexagonal all the way to the end, this one tapers into a circle, which seems like a very sophisticated use of plastics for such a simple cheap pen. So even when Schneider is trying to keep things very simple, it feels like the company takes that extra step. So just a, I feel like it's a company that does very good, makes very good products. And the cap is very cool too. You can see it's way more complex than it needs to be uh, has a sort of design and bulk to it, which is pretty cool. Not like the crystal where the cap is like as simple as possible. and has all sorts of sharp edges. Schneider clearly up their game there. Not that it makes a huge difference, but just interesting to me. Okay. Now we have, I would say the last pen out of the 10 I wanted to highlight. And this is called the I believe the name is called the Fisher Crown Imperial. It's been hard to find information about this pen. So looking at it, it may not be a pen you can easily identify. Then you read the label, Space Pen by Fisher, USA. Okay, that makes sense. Germany. Wait, what just happened, right? Fisher Space Pens are made in the US. That was kind of a big deal. And this one is, I guess, manufactured in Germany? Uh, I randomly found this thing on eBay searching for something else and it was like super cheap because there was, I guess no one knew what it was. So I picked it up and it's, I believe made of titanium or at least titanium colored. It was sold as the titanium pen. Uh, and the best I could find about it is it might be called the 
Fisher Space Pen Crown Imperial Titanium. And it was a pen sold in the 90s. This is a twist ballpoint. Really nice action. Really well-made pen. Kind of odd looking. This kind of tip, this nose cone type piece is very strange looking to me. And an otherwise very cool looking pen. It's got a twist action that Fisher doesn't use a whole lot. They just usually use push buttons. Taking it apart, we can see an official Fisher refill, the PR4, which is their standard space pen refill. So I'm pretty positive this is an official, like a real Fisher pen. It's just an older design. And I, if you know anything about it, let me know. And this one weird quirk with it is that the refill always misses the spring when I put it back. So you have to play with it a bunch, but then it works really well. And again, twist, the twist action is very cool on this. Just feels really nice. Last pen, and this is a bonus pen. We just already got through the 10 oddball ballpoints. Is this, this is the Lamy 2000 ballpoint. You've probably seen this pen before, but this is actually made of wood. This is the Lamy ballpoint blackwood edition. Uh, so the blackwood is African blackwood, or it's a wood called, I believe, Grandia, which is a very dense, very heavy wood. It's the type of wood you would make it, make it like an oboe or a clarinet out of. And Lamy made some number of these, I think like a 10,000 or something like that. Uh, this was a really random pickup to me. Not sure I'll stick with it long term because there's, I, I like the standard Macrolon Lamy, but this is the Lamy 2000 Blackwood. And the way it looks, the way it's uh, machined or whatever you would do with wood carved, I guess, it looks a lot like the Macrolon, but when you pick it up, you could see or feel that it's considerably heavy, heavier because this is either the third or the seventh or the ninth densest wood that's commercially available. So it's very dense wood, like an iron wood or something like that. Uh, so it's not properly used except for in musical instruments and tools and stuff like that, but this is the Blackwood edition made of Grandia trees, I believe from Tanzania. But uh, very interesting, it's, a, it's pretty hefty. It's kind of surprising when you pick up a Lamy 2000 and it's heavy. The parts are a little bit different. Uh, you can basically see that they have a matte kind of uh, finish. Like a, I would call it a satin finish technically instead of the standard finish. So it's slightly different. Uh, and then, I don't know, just a slight different, slightly different Lamy 2000, but it's a fair bit heavier. And the crazy part is if you put this next to a standard Lamy 2000 ballpoint, it looks almost the same. Like clearly this heavy wood was meant to look like the fiberglass plastic. Anyway, so that covers it. A bunch of fun, weird ballpoints. Let me know if uh, you like this or you want to know about more. Thanks for watching.